Thanks to me, perhaps I'm going to see for Jack Day's report. Since it's a great pleasure to have the authors of the paper Pulmonary Artery Denervation in Pulmonary Arterial Hypertension, a sham control study that is being published at Jack Interventions. And I will start with Dr. Greg Stone from Mount Sinai Hospital in New York. Thank you for being here with us. And uh, Dr. Shaolin Shen uh, from Nanjing, the first hospital, Nanjing Medical University in China. Thank you very much, Dr. Shen. I would like to start if you can provide us with a summary of the, of the paper. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Julia. Actually, it's a multi sand uh, randomized shim control study. They only include the patient with group 1 pulmonary arterial hypertension pH. So, the primary endpoint was the, the between group difference uh, of 6 meter water distance. So, finally, a total uh, of 128 patients were. Well, uh, study and uh, assigned to PNE pulmonary artery generation and shame control group. Uh, at six months follow up, so there was a very significant increase in the uh, primary endpoint in PNE group. Thank you very much. So, Dr. Stone, for the endpoints, you use the combination of six minute walk test, the hemodynamics, which are very important for PNH patients, life and PPR improvement. So which one do you think is the most important? And also how important is to continue the therapy, the Tosuas yesterday's five inhibitors? Right, well this was this was a very unique and important study because in China they were able to identify, there's a lot of pulmonary hypertension, and they were able to identify patients that were naive, that is not being treated with any of the standard therapies. And so all patients then were given study supplied phosphobesterase five inhibitor inhibitors, either sildenafil or tadalafil. Um, and then were treated with either the pulmonary denervation or sham. And what was fairly remarkable is that while the primary endpoint was a six minute walk, and there was about a 34 um, meter adjusted difference between the two groups, really everything that was looked at um, had substantial reductions. So there were improved hemodynamics, less pulmonary vascular resistance as, as one would expect, the pulmonary pressures were lower, right ventricular function got better, tricuspid regurgitation was decreased, BNP levels were decreased, and perhaps most importantly, um, uh, clinical evidence of benefit was fairly marked, both in terms of a reduction in clinical worsening and improvement in treatment satisfaction and overall clinical outcomes. So uh, almost an 80% reduction in clinical worsening, patients were stabilized, and m many more patients improved in the treatment arm compared to control. So this, um, uh, we expect, would lead to approval of pulmonary denervation in China, and we're now working with Pulnova to plan a United States and European-based trial to lead to approval in much of the rest of the world. And that will be on um, group one pulmonary hypertension again, but if anything, a more complicated patient population, because we'll look at patients who, you know, probably are uh, what are called reveal score seven to 10 patients, you know, moderately severe patients who are still symptomatic despite treatment with two or three standard um, pH approved drugs, which are more widely used uh, in the United States and in Western Europe. So hopefully we'll be able to get this trial started in 2023. And, uh, and again, a very carefully conducted sham controlled double blind trial where we'll assess blind enough patients to be able to demonstrate the incremental benefit of pulmonary denervation on top of all standard therapies. These are incredible results because these are very difficult patients to treat. They and are. also we saw that not many patients, they had relapse or, you know, to, they, they had to yeah. start the therapy in audience, so it went back to becoming better and it didn't worse, uh, except for one patient, is that correct? Yeah, well, so, so what, what's always been interesting is that when you do denervation, whether it's pulmonary denervation or renal denervation, what will be the duration of the effect? Well, you know, you're, you're causing neurolysis, and in the case of pulmonary denervation, you're decreasing, you know, um, myelin uh, thickness um, and the number of axons that are actually causing sympathetic excess hyperactivation. And the question is, will some of those nerves grow back, um, and what will be the duration of the effect? And so far, you've got therapy that's out to uh, many years. You should talk about this, and we haven't seen a decremental uh, response. It seems like it's been um, constant for many years. Yeah, actually, you know, uh, so far we have performed pulmonary denervation for almost 425 patients. Uh, very few complications during the procedure. Uh, for example, uh, most of the patient had uh, epistemic follow-up needs, 
but very, very mild chest pain. So we do not need a sedation during the procedure. Uh, I, I also, they respond, respond very pretty high, more than higher than 85%. Very few patients come again to a hospital because they worsen of the PAD. Uh, but very, very low, very significantly lower than the chest group. In duration, you've got how many patients after three years now? Yeah, actually, you know, uh, just about last month we published a, a median 4.8 years of follow up from our 120 patients with group 1 PH patient. Uh, 92 patients still improved very much in terms of the uh, SS capacity, hip dynamic, and cardio, and cardiac functions. Very good. That's impressive results. Uh, congratulations. My last question is about the learning curve for the operator. Is it an easy technique? I know that they, it doesn't have complications, but how many patients should an interventionist do in order to say that he's an expert in pulmonary artery regeneration? Yeah, actually, to be honest, you know, before the initialization of a multi-center study in China, we need to train operators from individual centers. So two or three cases are good enough because it's very simple. Let me tell you another story. You know, a couple of days in New York, we have a SAB meeting to have a student with a fresh man to study to do the PAD, but after five minutes, he became the expert in PAD. <laughs> yeah, so we had a simulated model, you know, life-size model from human cadaver studies, and you're, you're looking mainly for one location where there's, uh, you know, the distal left main pulmonary trunk at the origin of the left pulmonary artery, where it's the maximum number of pulmonary nerves and they're the closest to the lumen. And it's fairly easy using angiographic landmarks to know with this catheter, which is quite torqueable and directionable, when you've got the electrodes in the right spot. And in the vast majority of the patients, that's the only place you need to be. So I think all of us became uh, you know, experts in about 10 or 15 minutes of working with this model. That's great. So thank you so much, and congratulations on this wonderful paper.